Hello, everyone. Welcome to this presentation by Global Friends and Alliance Abroad. We are going to talk about Camp Counselor USA program. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Modesta Vadaria. I am CEO of Global Friends Company. We also have two more representatives from our company today. It's Maria and Parisa. And our main guest speaker today is Carmen Cooper. She is rep representing an American visa company sponsor, Alliance Abroad. And she will be the one to talk today about the program camp counselor. She will share very important information. And then she will also be able to answer any questions you have about the program. So our goal today is to make sure you understand everything about Camp Counselor USA and that you have your questions answered. Carmen, my word goes to you. Okay, good morning. So I can see some of you guys are, you have your faces on camera. It would be nice to see everybody. Part of being um, applying for this program is really showing your personality um, and showing that this is something that you want to do. So I highly recommend if you're able to, to put your face on the camera so I can see you. Um, again, my name is Carmen. Um, I have been with Alliance Abroad um, just over a year, but I have a long history with camp. Um, I am from the United States. I grew up in New York City. Um, as a kid, I went to camp every summer. And then I loved it so much that I stayed there and I worked there every summer till I was 22. Um, my kids go to camp. It is just a very traditional thing that happens in the United States. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some of my insights to the program, but I'm also going to talk to you as a sponsor. I'm going to talk to you about the qualifications, the things that I look for when I interview you. Um, and so if you have questions, it's good. Just write them down because as I go through it, I might be answering your questions. So it's really important to listen to what I'm saying and to get familiar with the things um, about the program. And then we can answer your questions one at a time at the end. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen. I put together a presentation um, that talks about camp, shows you some pictures, helps you understand a little bit more. Okay, just give me a second. Okay, can I get thumbs up for everyone that can see a picture for me? on your screen with yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay clear. Okay, just keep yourselves muted because we're recording. So it's important that we don't have any interruptions. Okay, so all of the pictures that you will see, um, including this one, will show people that have been in our programs as of last summer. Um, this is at the camp that I used to go to as a kid and that I worked at. It's in New Jersey. It's one of the states on the East Coast. And um, this is one of the participants. Um, with her group of teenagers. They were doing some hiking. Um, so I just wanted to go through and I'll tell you about each of them. So what is summer camp all about? You might've seen some movies, some TV shows about summer camp, but the true experience will happen when you are actually there. Um, I spoke to you a little bit about me going to summer camp. It is a very big tradition in the United States. Um, there are all different types of camps. There are day camps where parents drop their kids off just for the day to come home. There are other camps where you drop your kids off and the kids are there for the entire summer <laughs> or they're there for one or two weeks at a time. We've got um, traditional camps where it's, you know, fun games, sports, and then we've got ones that are special needs camps where um, there are people and children with um, disabilities that need some time at, at camp to do fun things. Um, camp is all about fun, 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 fun. You are, you are basically a cheerleader <laughs> when you're at camp. You are just having a lot of fun. You're going to play games. You are swimming. You're doing uh, climbing walls. It, it, is, it is an experience none other than, it's almost like you being a kid there, but you have a lot of responsibility. Um, so teamwork, teamwork. You're going to be meeting a lot of people that you've never met before from all over the world. A lot of them will be American because that's part of the camp tradition is to grow up and work there. Um, but there are some camps that are 50-50 in international and American staff. So what's really important is, is that there's teamwork and that everyone finds a way to work together to, for the common goal of 
the kids having a good time, for everyone being safe, um, for a very successful summer. When you're at camp, it is a safe place. It's going to be very strange. You're gonna be in a new country for the first time. You are gonna be overwhelmed. You're gonna be um, missing your family. But I need you to know that when you're there, you are in a safe place. The camps are usually at least one hour from a national, from a, like a, a big city or a place where you have an airport that you fly into. Some camps are even up to four hours away from those areas. So if you think about camp, I want you to think about someplace in the wilderness. I want you to think about someplace with a lot of trees and mountains and lakes. Um, and we'll go through all those things at some point, but I just want you to know, and I want you to share with your family that we only select places that are um, accredited memberships. Like there's requirements that camps have to go through to work with us and to work with any sponsor. So your parents will worry, you'll worry, but I promise you, we're not gonna put you in a place that is unsafe. It, will it feel strange and uncomfortable sometimes? Yes, but that's part of the cultural exchange um, and it gets better. Um, it's unplugged. So I don't think I did a very good job of explaining this last summer. So I put it in this um, presentation because I have to tell you, you won't have your phones, you won't have your laptops, you won't have your iPads, excuse me, I can't, you are going to be unplugged, okay? You're out in the wilderness, you're out in the woods, you're having fun, you're going swimming, you're taking care of children. You will have your phone and your items when you're off and they will be in a safe place. But when you sign up for this program, it's an experience. Think about experiences you see on reality TV, for example. They are just submitting themselves into the entire um experience so that they can get the full effect of it. Your friends and your family will be able to connect with you. There will be a time difference for you guys, for sure. But you will work out a system with your family and friends before you leave to check in with them, okay? Um, friendships, you will hear, because I think Savanel is on here, the biggest thing that you take away usually is your friendships because of the teamwork, because of being unplugged, being connected with people, your friendships that you make with people are just going to last you a lifetime. There are friends that I have since I was 10 years old that I still speak to. There are adults that <laughs> we work together that are still some of my closest friends. Um, fun fact about me is I met my husband at camp. He was a J1 <laughs> participant in 1997. That was a really long time ago. Um, I'm not saying that this, <laughs> this is something I want you to seek out and look for, but I'm telling you the relationships and the people that you meet, they will change your life. It has such a good impact on you. Um, one of the other things that I talk about is that it's hard work. This is the hardest job that you'll ever have. For working with children. Some people say it's the hardest job you'll ever love because there'll be some things you love about it and some things you'll be like, wow, that was really challenging. Um, but there's this word called resilience. What, what's the word? Um, how do you say resilience in Uzbekistan? It's a very good question. I don't know how to. Or something it. similar to it. Some adversionist. If okay. anyone can translate it to Uzbek. Maybe you tell me later. Samat Virginis, resilience. Как будет на узбекском? Узгос джо берешь. That. <laughs> okay. So this is what I want you to think of. When things get tough, I don't want you to say, this is not for me. I need to go home. I need you to dig deep. I need you to feel like you can do things. I want you to feel supported where you are. But it's, it, I promise you, if you make it through your summer and challenge yourself and have the resilience, you will come out of it stronger. You will come out of it more skilled. You will come out of it more confident. Um, okay, memories. I think I've talked enough about you think I could talk about camp all the time. I love it. <laughs> The memories that you make, the fun times you have, the traveling that you do afterwards before you go home, it is all a part of the experience. 
Um, this is just an opportunity for you to go to the United States for four months. Um, sometimes less than that is an opportunity for you to build your skills, to improve your English. Um, it's an opportunity to also go back if you do well. Part of doing that is following the rules as a sponsor that we give you, that you go into the country, you do your time on your program, you travel, and then you return home, okay? Um, we talked enough about challenge. I'm just going to move forward. You can see in the picture, this is Daniel with the yellow shirt, and he's at Camp Longhorn, which is here in Texas where I am. And him and David, who's the other guy in the picture, they're like best friends. They have a bond that I am so jealous of. They have just um, really come to know each other well and have had the amazing summer. And Daniel's going back. Daniel's an ambassador for our camp program. He wasn't able to be on today, but usually I have him come along and um, participate to talk um, about his experience. Okay, this is um, just a little breakdown so I can show you the different types of opportunities that we have. 90% of our placements, maybe 85, will be at a traditional overnight camp where you live there. That camp is your home for the summer. Um, all your meals are included. You're sleeping there at the camp in a cabin in the woods on a little bed. <laughs> Um, and that's your home for the summer. So you don't have to worry about bills. You don't have to worry about paying for anything. That is your time and your place. Remember when I said it was a hard job? So you're going to have like a day off a week. Right now, there is no job that exists like that. Okay. I, I just want to be extremely clear about this. Camp is a special program because they are, there's children that are there. You are their parents for that time that they are there. So there's no time off of being a parent. So <laughs> it's pretty much the same at camp for right now, since I've been there and even before me. There have been camps that are around since the 1920s. We're talking that some of them are coming up on over 100 years and they've always done things the same way. So you are with the children all day. You have an hour off here, an hour off there. And then there's a rotating schedule for you and all the other staff that gives you a full 24-hour day off within seven days, okay? That's a lot. But again, you're in this experience. You are um, doing your activities. You're working with the kids. And you are just a part of everything going smoothly. So is there more time than that? Yes, it just depends on the camp. When you are hired, everything will be very clear about what your schedule will be like, what to expect. Um, but still, when you get there, you're going to be like, wow, this is, this is different. This is not what I thought. So I like to be really clear. I don't want to scare anyone from doing this program, but I know it takes a lot. It takes a special kind of person to want to do this. Um, we also have day camps where you will live on or off camp. Um, and it's Monday through Friday. I don't have very many positions of those. They come and go very quickly. We also have special needs camps. Um, so if you have any experience or have the desire to have a, uh, an experience with a smaller camp where there's more like 50 kids, whereas traditional camps have maybe 500 children, um, there, there's a varying um, range for us to work with. Um, okay, so what are your qualifications? Hands up if you're over 18 years old. Can I see any hands up? Okay, that's one mandatory qualification. Excellent English. Thank you. Um, I need excellent English. Okay, so you are probably practicing your English. You're going to school. Sometimes you speak in English. Now is the time to improve and practice daily. Um, it's not just, hi, how are you? It's got to be that you are able to have a conversation with children in English and understand their needs. So between global friends talking to you and them having this um, interview with you after this, they'll qualify you for English. And then myself and my teammate, Tracy, we will interview you. Those are the first two things that we qualify you on. Okay, because we know that that's something important to the camps. And then you see the blue check marks. You only need one of four of those. 
to qualify for a camp program. You can be a student or teacher or youth program worker or have special skills. Special skills are usually what people are hired on in the United States. However, I know that Global Friends has gone over their qualifications with you and you do have to be a student at university enrolled. So for this, for Global Friends, for the country that you're from, you need to have student university, student at a university enrolled full time and or one of those other items. So you have to have some kind of special skill. Like, are you really good at mountain biking, for example, or are you really good at art? And these skills have to be things that you can teach children. Um, there's Daniel again, as you can see, he's in the water. He was a lifeguard. So um, Daniel worked at his university in the sports complex and he was a trainer and he did lifeguarding. He also was a tennis expert. Um, so think about the things that you're really good at. You know, think about the things that are your hobbies that you like to practice. Are there other skills? Are there musical instruments that you've been trained on? You know, we don't do a lot of them at camp, but there are some music programs. There are some things like that. Um, I don't know if this is very popular in Uzbekistan, but horse riding, is horse riding a thing? Yes. If you are trained in horse, it, it, that's great. If you are trained in horse riding, if you know how to take care of horses, are they, do you love it? Is it a passion of yours? Camps really need good people who love horses. Um, there are some camps that have equestrian programs that have 70 horses on their campus. Um, there are some that just have a few and do a little riding, but there are some that have very um, expansive uh, equestrian programs. Um, there's also the sports, there's the football, the soccer, the uh, tennis arts and crafts, ropes. Um, and any of these words that I'm saying, you can also Google them and take a look at photos for yourself and do a little research. Um, ropes course, challenge course. So, you know, the, the kids are tied up and put on harnesses and then they do climbing. It's like rock climbing in a center. Um, there's a lot of water. It is really important that you know how to swim. It's not a deal breaker for me necessarily, but for some camps, it will be a deal breaker because they need to know that you will be safe, that you wouldn't be at risk, and that you can help children. Um, okay, so here's, I haven't updated this. We've got um, Maine and Massachusetts also coming up with camps. So I just put a star into where I have some camps, um, and we get camp requests every week. So um, things go very quickly with camps as they are hiring for sometimes 50 people, sometimes one or two, they are constantly hiring and turning over their, their um, opportunities. I also have some calendar um, icons on here. So depending on when you are available to start your experience, that will be the first way that I match you to a camp. So if you tell me I'm not available to work until um, the end of June or the beginning of July, unfortunately, those opportunities will not be available. What's really important is that you are available as soon as possible, as soon as the summer starts. We have some opportunities that start as early as May 15th. And then we have some other opportunities that keep going through May and then June. June is a really popular month especially on the East Coast where, you know, New York is and New Jersey and Pennsylvania. So we can talk more about dates um, as we go a little bit further. I can answer your questions, but uh, what's really important is if you apply for the program that you know when school is finished, when your, pro your um, tests, um, your um, exams, exams is the right word, when your exams are finished, um, and you are ready to fly. So those will be important things. When you set up your profile in um, our program, you need to know when you would be able to get on a plane and when you have to return home, okay? Really important dates because camps will say, that fits my schedule. They are, that would be great for us. Here is an example of <laughs> a schedule. As you can see, it does not say time off because I don't know when you'll be off. 
but this is every day. And if Sarvanav is on here, she will attest what I'm saying. Um, rise and shine. You are up very early with your kids. You are, you will be living with children, okay, in a cabin. And there will be up to 12 children and at least two adults, you being one of them. Sometimes three or four, depending on how big this is. Remember what I said about teamwork and helping each other out. Rise and shine, you're up. You get up, you're not only responsible for getting yourself ready, you are responsible for getting all the kids ready. Most of them will be very self-sufficient and will be able to do all these things on their own, but it's encouragement, it's reinforcement. Hey, did you brush your teeth or let's go do this? Okay, everyone gathered together, we're gonna walk down to breakfast. Everything is family style as you can see here in the photo. Um, the food we'll talk about, it's different. <laughs> um, but it's American food that is done at camp. So there's breakfast and we start that very early. Um, there's a lunchtime and then there's dinner. A lot of the food is just very bland American food that kids like when they're away from home. Most camps have like a salad bar or fruit, um, tea and coffee stations to keep you going, water stations. Um, you'll get used to these things and you know, you'll find what you like. But as you can see, you're going from activity to activity to activity. It is very structured. You will always know what you're doing and where you're supposed to go. Um, and my most favorite fun thing is the campfires, right? So at night when the sun goes down and it's a big camp community thing, everyone gathers and they put together a really nice campfire songs get sung and you get to learn all these things games get played sometimes they do awards and then they do s'mores have you ever had um a marshmallow is there such a thing as a marshmallow <laughs> in uzbekistan there are marshmallows in uzbekistan but they don't know how to prepare it it took okay. me 30 years to finally <laughs> learn what you how you have to eat it so yeah <laughs> So basically, be one of the best experiences once you guys. Yes, it's, it's so fun. And it's, oh, such, it. yes, <laughs> it's such a good reward after a long day. So a marshmallow is a sticky, gooey, um, fluffy uh, candy almost. It's a treat. It's a deli, you know, just a treat. And you put it on a stick and you roast it so that it melts. And then there's two cookies. We call them graham crackers. And then you put a piece of chocolate and then someone helps you because it's teamwork. You put the marshmallow on top of the chocolate and then someone, and then you put the other piece on it. So it's like making a sandwich, but it melts and you get covered. It's so messy, but it's so good. <laughs> but so the good. kids love, it is, it is such a nice way to wrap up. Does that happen every day? Probably not. You don't want the kids hopped up on sugar before they go to bed, right? But it's just a really fun community um, experience where everyone gathers, okay? Some camp activities, I, I, I said, please Google and look at some of these things. You can see the campfire with the roasting marshmallows. Um, you can see the ropes course climbing. You can Google camps in the United States activities. What is a day like? What are some activities that they do? All of the camps in the United States have videos, all of them. You can spend days looking at the videos, at the experience, how they are trying to share um, what their mission is at the camps. Um, and the priority will always be that the children have an amazing experience away from home. Yes, it's your experience too, but you are responsible for helping making that possible. Okay. Shh, have my dog behind me. <laughs> Um, okay, Wiffy, I love this um, saying, what's in it for you? Okay, so this is a cultural exchange experience. It is not an experience where you are going to be like, wow, I got paid so much and now I have all this money. Unfortunately, that's not what this program was built to be. Okay, this is an experience for you to work in the United States for a short period of time to gain skills, to share your culture, to experience American culture, and have your expenses paid for in most cases. 
Housing, meals, and laundry is included in majority of the positions that we have. There are several that do not have that, but that is not really what I'm talking about. I really feel like majority of the placements will be, again, in overnight camps. You get a stipend, okay? A stipend is the camp saying, I'm going to give you this amount of money in addition to your meals, laundry, and housing um, as a part of your experience. You really don't need money while you're at camp. You should bring money to travel and to have with you for safekeeping. We do have a minimum amount that we um, suggest for your safety, um, but you don't need the money. Maybe if you have a day off, you can say, hey, you know, I'm going to go on this little trip on my day off. I'd love a little cash advance and they will do that for you. But most of the time, camp will hold the money for you. So it's not at risk. Okay. It is safekeeping when they have it. And then you will get it at the end. Some camps like to pay you every week. It just depends. I can't predict where that, how that will happen. It will be between you and the camp. When you sign up with us with Global Friends and Alliance Abroad, um, we, you have 24 seven support. I got really close to a lot of the participants that um, went to summer camp through our program last year. You know, I was talking to them on WhatsApp. I was, you know, encouraging them, trying to support. You know, it's, it's hard to do, and I will do that as much as I can, but I just need you to know that if it's not me, then it's someone else here in our support um, hub that will be able to help you and answer your questions, but also camp is a great source of support, okay? We are your sponsor. We want to make sure that you're safe and that you're happy and that things are going well. However, they are your employer. So it's really important to have really good communication with the people that are there working with you. Um, you get to travel in the United States after your program. I know that some people like to come a few days before their program, which is fine, but I highly encourage coming on the day that you're supposed to. Uh, for example, if you the camp says, hi, we are meeting at JFK Airport on this day to collect all of the international travelers that are coming so that we can travel two hours by car to the camp. If you miss that, it is your responsibility um, to pay for and to figure out when you're in the United States how to get to that camp if you miss that ride. It is not as easy as you think. Yes, in some cities we have, you know, taxi services and Ubers and Lyfts. However, remember I said you go into the woods, right? And it's a long drive. It is very expensive as well. So I think it's really important to make the decision to follow the rules um, in many cases. And um, so it's this is an experience, right? But think about the effect this has on your career, your, you know, what you want to do after university. It helps you get further in your university with your English skills. Um, and also, if you do really well and you want to go back, that opportunity is there for you most of the time. Okay. And let me see if I have anything else. Okay. And I'm really sorry. I'm doing all the talking. And I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. <laughs> um, but so step one now is when after you hear everything that I said, and if you still feel like this is the program for you, your next step is to apply with Global Friends. Okay. Global Friends will do a quick interview with you, assess your English, assess your qualification, and then they will say, yes, or maybe let's try something else. And then you will start your paperwork for our program. They will send you a profile link in your email, help you get set up, where you tell us a little bit about you, you give us some documents, and we start. I have to tell you now that this is going to be a longer application um, than just applying for a job in your home country because you have to do our paperwork, Global Friends' paperwork, and then camp paperwork. This is a very big deal. Um, so we have to know that you are committed to the process. You um, can do all these things, interview with us, and then it may take a few months for us to find the perfect placement for you. We really try our best to find some place that matches your dates, your skills, your personality, 
Um, and the same thing for the camps. You know, sometimes it takes a little while. Sometimes it can be very quick. Um, so even though we're going through and we're applying and we're talking about camp right now, you may not get placed until maybe February or March. Um, and that's normal. I don't want you to panic, but we want you to get placed as quickly as possible so that when it comes time to doing your embassy appointment, everyone is ready and placed and has everything in order to go so that everyone arrives in a timely manner. Okay, so <laughs> I finally get to stop talking for a minute. Um, so we are all about telling stories about experiences, okay? We are always on social media. We're talking about, you know, the things we did during the day, the things we ate, right? All of those things. This is a much bigger deal. Um, these are some photos of people that um, experienced um, their summer in the United States at summer camps. They did traveling, some of them, went, um, and did fun things like, um, I think that's a... Uh, a baseball game. That's a baseball game. There's so much to do. There's cities to see. There's all the experiences, but the experience that while you're at the camp is the most important. Those are the ones we want you to tell stories about. Those are the ones we want you to have good feelings about, good memories, and we can't wait to meet you. So that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> I think we have Servinoa Sabiro here who participated last year, right? <laughs> how are you so nice to see you thank you how are you doing good good well i'll let you say whatever you think you would want to share with them about why they should take a chance on the program and it's okay to be completely honest and say like how you felt during it but also how you feel after experiencing it would be amazing Hi guys, my name is Harbonos, but you can call me just Sarah. Uh, last summer, I spent my uh, time in America. Uh, my camp was Lohican in uh, Pennsylvania, Lake Como. Uh, I think you can hear me, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, my camp was Lohican. Uh, first two weeks, it was the worst time in my life. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> yes, Carmen absolutely. know about it already. I'm so sorry, Carmen, about that. No, I want, you, I want you to be honest because I, I, I'm so proud of you for getting through it and digging deep and finding out ways to solve the things that were happening. But it's important because you as young people, this is a different job. You're not going to a local place in your home country to work for a few hours a day. This is a very big experience. So, so first two weeks, uh, I was I was there two months, I think. Yeah, yeah. First two weeks was the worst time in my life because it was the the adaptation time, you know. Um, I have no internet. I have no phones. There's a lot of kids. There's just in English. I knew that, but I didn't ready for that. So I didn't understand the people. Uh, problem is not in a language. I just didn't understand the American guys. But I have, I, but I had a lot of international stuff also. So um, from Mexico, Australia, Colombia, from Europe, I love them all. So after two weeks, uh, it's adaptation is just um, off. And I really started to have fun there. I really start to love kids, my kids. Uh, I have 10 girls every two weeks. They are all, all cutie guys, like ever. Mm -hmm. I love them. They love me too. I know about it. Uh, we talking talking every day now too. So yeah, it was a great experience. But my first problem was the about, I didn't have internet like two months. But yeah. after two weeks, it feels like normal. Okay, I don't need internet. I don't need phone. <laughs> I just, I just want to be with my kids because they are the cutest guys ever. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so part of what 
Sarah's <laughs> explaining is unplugged, right? If you're in the middle of the woods, it's really hard to get a, a Wi-Fi signal in these places. There mm -hmm. is um, also what she's describing is before the children come, when you first arrive at camp, there is training and orientation. This is when all of the people that work there come together to learn the rules, to understand the camp, to understand how to do activities. Um, and there's some fun games and things that happen with the staff adaptation, right? That's mm -hmm. your time to get to know each other because that mm -hmm. is where the teamwork happens. You need to work together to make friendships, to help each other out, to understand how to work with the kids when they come. And then when the kids come, that's another shock because you're like, whoa, <laughs> this is a lot. Right? <laughs> but if you accept the experience and get to love and understand your kids and they and you open up, the children will feel that and they will attach to you. Right. And obviously they have. And that is such a big deal. When you are in it for the children, they feel it. They know it. And it is, it's like, that's where the magic happens. You know, that's the special moments. They go home to their little town in Pennsylvania and say, I had the best counselor and she was from <laughs> Uzbekistan. How many children in the United States do you think meet people from Uzbekistan? Maybe in New York, right? Where it's a little bit busier, maybe in LA, when there are these smaller towns in these United States. This is such, this is why we do this program for cultural understanding. Yes, it's a job. Yes, it's an experience for you. And for the children, it is for a greater understanding of cultures. That is so important right now. You as young people are the voices of the future. You, the things you do now affect you, affect us, affect everybody. These experiences, short times, they shape your life. I saw a video of Sarah talking on Global Friends from before she went and then after she came back. She looked like two different people. <laughs> her confidence, um, the way she spoke, her body language, even the things that she says, she's being honest. The first two weeks were very rough. I, you know, I was struggling to get in touch with my family. Also time difference, right? So you may have some time to make a phone call, but your parents are sleeping, right? So it's really important that we figure out or you guys figure out with your families a way to text each other when you have time off. FaceTime will be harder. Some camps have better Wi-Fi than others. That's, that's not a part of my job to figure that out. I'm just telling you from the beginning that this is an experience that's a full immersion, right? It's about growing. Um, you know, you guys are all over 18 and I'm gonna be 47. I've been there, done that. I have three kids. I can tell you it shaped my life. It changed things for me. And I'm in the United States. Think about what it does for you guys. Think about the friends you tell, your universities, like you handle life differently. I think, and I had an interview like a couple of weeks ago. I think if you work at a summer camp, you can do anything afterwards. <laughs> that I still stick to that. I think that if you can make it through a summer, the skills that you learn, the way you test yourself, the way you talk with people, you're really pushing your boundaries. If you can get through that, you can do anything. So, uh, you know, thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> I also don't want you to feel bad about the first two weeks because I think 90% of the students go through exact same experience. And it's not just camp program, it's any other cultural exchange program we run. Going from Uzbekistan to US, it's like, traveling to a different planet not just to a different <laughs> continent so you did great and you should be proud of yourself we are very proud of you yes you. we also i think have mahbuba here <gasps> uh, are you able to 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 unmute yourself and talk mahbuba thank you yes <laughs> maria do you know if she's here or not Actually, she joined the meeting, but I'm not sure if she is able to speak right now. She wrote me in Telegram that, that she participating, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I can ask her. Hi, can anyone hear me? 
Yay! Hi. 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 So I cannot like turn on my camera right now. I don't know. I mean, I do not understand how Zoom works. To be honest, sorry okay. for that. Um, okay. Hi everyone. I, I, I'm okay. I cannot turn on video. I mean, I'm not good at it. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, my name is Mahbuba Saniva. Uh, so I'm from Uzbekistan, as you know right now. <laughs> um. I had, can you see me right now? Yes, yes yep. we can see you. Sorry, I was working. <laughs> um, my name is Mahmoud Saliva, I'm from Uzbekistan, and I'm really proud of myself and thankful to the Global Friends for the chance that I went to the USA and had the experience as a camp counselor there. Um, I had the same experience as Sarah, I can say. I mean, the first two weeks, that, that was, I mean, that was really kind of, I, can, I can't say that was like horrible or, or something that everyone will have this kind of experience for the first two weeks, for sure. Everyone, I mean, 100% of the people, not even from Uzbekistan, from different countries too. <laughs> because it's kind of, I mean, it's really hard to be independent and you, you will feel that you will be alone in the middle of the woods, let's say. I mean, let's be <laughs> honest. That was, that was really hard. That was really stressful. But after like two weeks, you really, I mean, start to feel, I mean, like independent, joining, communication, I don't know, culture exchange will grow, I mean, like 100%, you'll like it. Day by day, you'll like what you're doing. I mean, the people you're, I, I, I can't say like, even seven years old kids, they will be so cute and they will be like kind of respectful to you. You'll like it. You'll want to have a child. <laughs> I want it because they were so cute. Um, and at the camp, I like food, let's say, that, that was delicious, I like, I had a new experience, which I really, really like and thankful, and, um, and about the internet, as far as I do, I do understand you, we had, uh, in our camp, we had stuff room where you can go, like, uh, two hours in a day and just chill out, talk with your friends, talk, talk with your family, so everything was good, and after the, at the end of the day, you will have, like, more time like three four hours just to relax take your time uh recharge your energy and other stuff that was really good and the people and the others who are here and listening to me i really really recommend you i mean because i had experience and now i really recommend you to go there and have this kind of experience and just like i mean you'll change for 180 degrees as sarah did it, it's really i mean Worth it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I got to see Makbuba when I went to visit her camp. I didn't make it to Logiki. Um, but you know, to to see you guys when I go to visit, it it's amazing. It's such a good feeling to see you guys in your new home. That is your home for the summer, right? It is your second family. And I think another part of that adaptation is if you live with your family right now and you've never lived on your own, that's a very similar experience, right? If you leave home and go to university, you kind of understand a little bit about what this experience will feel like, but it is going to be another level of that because you won't have people from home. Yes, you'll have, you know, a, a nice, you know, example of having people from different countries as Sarah was saying, you know, Colombia, Mexico, Australia, England, it, it is where everyone comes. And I can honestly tell you there are American staff that are also nervous that have never done it before that are leaving home and having this experience also. Not everyone is like me who, you know, goes to camp and does these things. Other people are looking for the same kind of experience while they live in the United States. So I can say if, you, if anyone has any questions, it might be good to maybe raise your hand or put it in the chat and we can answer your questions. Um, and I can see if anyone has any questions. Did I do that good? Did I give that much? <laughs> you were great, yes. Yes, thank you, you covered Karen. everything. If, if you have questions, I, I think you should talk to your family about this opportunity and really be honest. If you get this recording, show it to them. Like we have no secrets. This is, this is exactly what the program is. 
look at camps in the United States, you know, look at their videos, look at their activities. Um, they, they will say a lot about the fun and the good because they want people to join them. But the other side of it is the things that we're talking about, the hard work, the long days. In the United States, it's very hot in the summer. So, you know, think about it. You're out in the sun. You're not like, hey, I'm going to go home and sit in the air conditioning where it's nice and cool. No, you're still sleeping in the, in the cabin. I feel um, like we have to invite Carmen to Uzbekistan during summer too, so that <laughs> she would experience Uzbekistan heat and understand that yeah, U.S. heat yeah. is nothing. In Are you sure? Really? Okay. Yeah. I, okay. Because, <laughs> you know, tech, we look, well, Sorry, and I both live in Texas, so we both know heat. So it's hotter than Texas? It's it's very yes, similar, it is. and okay. even hotter than that. Yes. Okay. Just, there um, is less access to ACs too. So the yeah. car, a lot of cars would not have an AC. So oh really? Okay. I, I will take that challenge once I visit. <laughs> um, but even like in Pennsylvania, it was colder because they're near the mountains. So Right. I remember her telling me, I don't have any more clothes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was really cold. It, uh, there was every day like rain. Every every day there uh, were rain. And for the first time it was cold. But then as adaptation, I, I just take it easy. Good, good. You get you adapt, right? You just get used uh -huh. to it. It becomes OK. Well, this is how it's going to be. And then you just keep going and, it, and then it feels good. But then I, I just started to love rain. Yes, rain, yeah. I didn't know it rained that much, but yes, there's, there's definitely rain, there's thunderstorms. Like once you, you know, look at the places that you are applying to be in, because we try to match by date first. But if if I say, oh, well, I've got a couple of opportunities where you can interview at, then it's looking at, okay, what's Pennsylvania like? What's New York like? What's Texas like? What's the weather like? And as you get hired and, you know, get closer to the time of being at the summer camp, they will talk to you about what to pack in those things. But really, really pay attention. You can look at the weather, you can ask questions. Some camps are trying to do like um, better job at um, getting to know people before they get to camp and building communities like on Facebook or on social media so that they're, you're connected to people who you're going to meet first so that you could say, have you, what did you pack? Or are you nervous? And you start to get to know each other before you get to the camp so that you kind of know someone a little bit before you get there, um, which I think is an amazing idea because uh, connect, that's how everyone connects right now, <laughs> social media and messaging, so. I think we have uh, someone who wants to ask the question, Farouk. Okay, hello. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I didn't really get the, the how the internet works there. So there is no internet at all, or it's just very limited? It's limited. It is essay. limited. Um, and there are staff rooms, staff buildings, staff areas um, where the internet is working. And that's where you should be using your devices on your time off. Um, there is always a camp office because the parents need to contact camp and be in touch with them. And there's also um, a nurse's office where if you're not feeling well or the kids are not feeling well, where they're able to take care of you there as well. So there is internet on camp for safety, 100% and parent contact. It just is limited when you are um, in your staff quarters because that's, that's just the way it is. So FaceTime videos would be harder. Um, in, in my opinion, it would be harder to connect for FaceTime videos, but messaging should be very easy. Text messaging should be fine. Um, on your days off, you can probably go to a local place where they have more Wi-Fi, like Starbucks, for example, and you can set up a time to meet with your family. I'm just giving you alternatives. I'm not saying this is how it is. I'm just saying you can be resourceful and you can plan and find ways to keep in touch with people. Um, your parents will need to know that you're safe. You're gonna want to contact them, but it's also the camps talking to me and saying you arrived. I'm talking to global friends and saying you arrived. 
So we can work together to make sure that messages get passed, um, that things, you know, get, you know, there's good communication. There's no one's ever going to, they should not worry about you. Parents are going to worry because we worry, but you will be in a safe place and they will have the address and know the people and all of those things. Um, all right, thank you. Um, my second question is uh, about the working hours. Maybe I missed that part about what are the working hours? Are like this, the same with the work and travel, like 32 hours a, a week minimum or is it different? That's different. That is with work and travel. Um, so your schedule is 7 a.m. to... 9, 9.30 p.m. every day you have, um, and this is just a general statement of time. It just depends on each camp that you work at. Um, you, they may say, okay, you have this hour off this morning and you can have this hour off here. Um, but you're working seven days a week. Within that seven day period, you have one 24 hour time off. And then um, in the evenings, when the children go to sleep, there's this thing that they do that's um, on duty or off duty. So you take turns having a night off with the other adults in the room um, so that, you know, if it's my turn and I'm staying, I'm not going out to hang out and to watch movies or whatever in the staff room. I'm going to stay and make sure all of the kids are asleep and safe and they don't need anything while um, Daria, Maria, and Sarah, they go off and they have the evening off and they can go to the staff quarters and we rotate, okay? So each camp is different. I try to give you as much information as I can when um, we talk about a camp, but it is also the camp director's conversation with you to say, hey, this is what a typical day is like. And you should ask those questions. So if I am telling you within, you're going to camp for 10 weeks, for example, the first two weeks are usually orientation and training. And then you have about eight weeks with children. Within those eight weeks, you should expect to have eight days off. Does that make sense? Well, well yeah. It's not very much. And it's this is, I'm not saying this is, you know, set in stone, but that's for example to know, oh, okay. So I have some hours off here and there, and they'll, you know, put those through. And because this is not work and travel, um, this is a very different program working with children. And this is how it's set up for everyone in the United States, including American staff. This is the only job that still exists in 2022 that still has this structure, but is because of children's safety, okay? So you are, are acting as a parent during that time. And it's just, that's the safety that they have to have for children. All right, thank you. Thank you. We have one more question from Servinos. How long does this program last? Um, well, I think I gave an example. It's about 10 weeks. Could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less. Um, your allowance will be on your, when you go to the embassy, they will put in the dates that camp hired you for. And that is the time that you are there to be expected there. And then you have 30 days to travel afterwards outside of the camp. Um, so it can be, it could be like three months if you, if you want to take advantage of all that time. Um, it just depends on what you want to do. It also depends on your summer holidays as well. So you can't miss your university. You have to do it after your university ends and before it starts. And I think we can, if we can take one more question from Estora. Yes, of course. Estora. Um, hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, I have a question about the stipend, uh, about the scholarship, or how do you call it? Um, is it something mandatory or it turns out that it may not be issued and everything it depends on the rules of the camp? Did I get right? I'm not, I'm not sure what you're asking. 
I think she's asking whether she uh, whether she's going to receive stipend for sure, or if that's something that the camp will decide during the summertime. Oh no no no! When you when you get hired, you sign a contract. They sign a contract. As long as you stay the amount of time that is agreed upon and worked, you are guaranteed that money. Um, they just pay it differently. Some people say, "Oh, you made you completed two weeks. Here's some of your money." Um, each camp is different. Some will say we pay you at the end of the summer for safety, but also to make sure that you stay your time. Because let's be honest, not everybody's like, you know, 100% going to, you know, come into the country and follow the rules. So they just have to be very cautious about those things. So and I just want to be clear in case anyone missed it in the beginning, this is a I work for Alliance Abroad. We are a visa sponsor for people that qualify for the program. When you sign into this program, you are signing a contract with us, with Global Friends and the United States that says you're coming into the country to work for the camp program and that your plan is to return home, okay? So those things are really important when you follow the rules. Um, if for some reason you do not make it through your summer and you need to go home, let's say there's a family emergency, um, camp will pay you for the time that you work there. It will be um, divided up. So let's say you get paid $2,000 for the summer and you only work two weeks. They will divide those days into the $2,000 and cut you a check for that. Does that, did, did I answer your question? I think I gave too much information. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I You're welcome. No. Okay, any other questions? Oh, I thought I saw one in the chat. I think that was for the time of the program, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we answered that. Uh, well, guys, if you have, if someone feels shy right now, you know Maria's and Parisa's contact information, please reach out to us, call us, email us, ask your questions. We are here for you. If some of you who are still not registered for the program would like to proceed with the program, again, please reach out to Maria and Parisa. We'll be happy to have you on the program. And then once we register you, then we will also introduce you to Carmen one more time or to anyone else from Alliance Abroad who will do a second set of interviews for you to make sure that you fully understand the program, that you match all requirements and so on. But I think we're good for now. Thank you so much, Carmen, for sharing all the thank information. You. Thank you. And thank you everyone for spending your time with us. And um, I hope to be interviewing you. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Thank you, Savanov and Makbuba. I think Makbuba signed off, but Oh, Sandra, thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you for everyone. Okay. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.